Welcome to another episode of the 1010 Challenge on FIFA 17. And yes, it is again, it is me, it is Ida. And as you can see, we've got 12 points still, so we are technically holding in the league, but we want to get a win. We've got five games remaining, projected points, we've got 27s, so we've got plenty of time to win this, win this ting. Last episode, yeah, it wasn't the greatest, but we'll see what we can do. So what I'm going to do is just double check everybody's okay, they are not. So what I'm going to do is apply a fitness card, and then I will go straight into the game. A few moments later. Alright, let's see what this guy's tell. Okie dokie. He has Butland, uh, Serge Aurier, he's got uh, Marquinhos, Smalling, Luke Shaw, Sanchez, Valderrama, Verratti, Quadrato, uh, Mandzukic, and Die uh, not Diego Costa, Douglas Costa. Alright, let's start this game off. He has quite a substantial team. He has a bloody legend in his squad. Now, this doesn't mean that he's the greatest player. He might have just got lucky with some packs. He might be terrible, but I doubt it with a squad like that. But can we go straight through? Almost straight through and score a goal. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Should have scored there. Really, really, really should have because I might not get a chance again with his insane squad. Giving players a chance is something that I want to talk about today. And get not just players, but managers as well. Because that's what I've noticed in the last few years in football is people don't give managers and new players a chance to adjust to leagues. Because you look at players like Neymar and you look at Suarez and you look at um, Cristiano Ronaldo and how they've pretty much gone straight into the leagues that they're in. And they perform unbelievably well for playing in a new league. And I think it's terrible to criticise a player when they're in their first season in a new league. Because you look at a player like Pedro for Chelsea. This season, he's been immense. But you look at last season, and he wasn't good. But, you know, playing your whole career in Barcelona, in La Liga... The leagues are just completely different. And this guy's 28. He's played, or he was last season. Obviously, he's 29 now, I think. Unless 27 and 28, but, you know, correct me on the numbers if I'm wrong. But you look at his stats in the league last year, and they were terrible. Look at the stats in the league this year, and he's been brilliant. And all that is, is having time, and obviously a new manager, but having, oh, what was that, Aspas? Having more time in a new league, and getting used to actually what you've got to do and also uh, some players like you look at Pedro as the example I've given but he's a small player and that almost went in Oof. he's a small player and you he has to figure out a way to beat opponents because he can't do it with strength he has to do it with his pace and some trickery and some skill and his passing, because obviously Barcelona, he's going to have a decent uh, passing success and be pretty skillful at that. And it's just something that I think people need to give players a chance at. It's through to Aspas. Aspas is through. Can we lay it back off to Pedro? Yes, it's in for Pedro. I got a bit lucky with that skill because I thought Aspas had four-star skills. And tried to do some sort of uh, cut inside, but he just sort of did a heel to heel flick instead. So it worked out, so that's fine. And that is a goal for Pedro. And it's very, very laggy, which is not helping either player. And might get a rage quit, hopefully, if we can keep this score up. Wow, this is not great. I pushed slide tackle a long time before that, and it's a red card. Yeah, how did I guess? How did I guess? Right, let me make a sub. I need to make a sub. Oh my god, this is horrible. Oh, my keeper saved it. Oh, he saved it. Okay, this is disgusting. I can't do anything with this. 
Okay, the connection's been lost with the opponent. I'm hoping that we just lose the contracts because I don't want to lose this game, another one. I hope it's not my fault because if that is, it's annoying with my internet, which would be really frustrating and really, really annoying. All right, as you can see, we did actually win that last game, even though it timed out or whatever happened. They might have rage quit because we... I don't know, but we got the promotion, so what we need to do is win one more game and hopefully we'll get into the next uh, league, Division 6. As you can see, what I've had to do is change the back four because I had Hernandez sent off in the last game and I don't think he's really good enough uh, as the th other two players I have in the club, or three players actually, I don't think either of them are good enough to sort of replace this back four. And I've put um, Dechilio there because it does give him 10 chemistry and it's only these two that aren't on 10 chemistry a few inches later okay this is this guy's team got a bundesliga team he has leno and go has got uh peace check oh, i've forgotten the oh uh, bartra top rack uh rodriguez sanchez dembele tiago uh costa and i i didn't see the strikers in time but i'm assuming they're pretty decent so <laughs> his squad looks pretty nice he's got nice links all round but we've had to go back to the old squad from pretty much the whole team from Division uh, 8. In terms of managers that should be given time in their job, you have to look at Guardiola. He took over at Man City and everybody thought he was going to be this you know, ridiculously amazing manager that would just win everything and bring Messi in and Neymar and you know XYZ players and just the best in the world, which isn't going to happen because he's at Man City. He's not a... Man United or Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. It is Man City after all. And so you have to have some lowered expectations at the start. If he does amazing with them, then their expectations can rise. But I don't think they can have that expectation at the start. All right, Pedro's on the ball. Pedro's on the ball. Can I do something cut inside? No, nope, he's took me out, but he got the I got the corner out of it. I was going to say he took me out, but he didn't really. He just slide tackled and won the ball. All right, let's go for short corner. Or not. Can I take another short corner? That's better. Quick one. Come on. There we are. There we are, Camperini. Oh. A manager you could say that doesn't need extra time in the new league is Conte. You look at how well he's done. He's got Chelsea from 10th last season into pretty much winning the league position, top of the table, and in a FA Cup final. Which is just brilliant from a new manager. And... You'd think that he might be able to push on next season and do something in Europe. Not necessarily win a cup, but, you know, do well in the league in terms of the Champions League, maybe get into a quarter-final, which is better than pretty much every other English team did this year, apart from Leicester. So it's not exactly a bad bad uh, accomplishment. Vichilio's coming down the line for me. I'm going to keep going down the line, see if he slides. He does. I'm going to pull it back. Finish it. Offside, that's... No, it's not offside. I thought that was offside. Oh, hang on. Actually, no. The guy that I crossed it in with, Dechilio crossed it in and they had a guy that was with him. So, that's a nice goal. I mean, <laughs> it was pretty lucky. Two deflections and a sort of sweaty goal, but I got the rebound, so I don't mind. It's, <laughs> it's what happens sometimes in the game. But I needed the first goal. I want to just get the title. I don't care if it's a sweat or not. When you look at managers that did get given a chance when they first took over a club, is somebody like Alex Ferguson or Sir Alex Ferguson, because they were there's all that you know the um, famous uh, saying that he pretty much could have been sacked or he was one game away from being sacked before he won the well that game that he was going to get sacked after if he'd lost he didn't get sacked and look what happened after that you know he went on to win an amazing amount of trophies I don't even know all the numbers off the top of my head but I think it was like 20 league trophies or something like that 18 league trophies I mean what more can you ask for for a manager if you give them a little bit of a chance somebody that's got a bit of a spark as a manager now half time pretty decent so far let's move into the second half I do feel sorry for managers because you look at somebody like Tony Pulis he's done very well with West Brom and obviously they've taken their foot off the gas recently and you could say that maybe they're not motivated as much because they've got the 40 points. But they were very high up the league. They had some very good results. And, 
you know, they've not needed to do anything since they've been secure and safe. And that's maybe a mark down on Tony Pulis, but, you know, a club like West Brom, what do they really expect to get out of their manager and the club with how much money they have to spend, what their sort of budget is? I mean, are they expecting... Oh, that's a fantastic finish. That's a great goal. I can stop that. I was trying to get close. That's a nice kit as well. It's some Japanese kit or Chinese kit. West Brom, though, a lot of their fans I see... And I hear on like a phone, um, six, wow, that's a horrible pass. I look on um, 606, the phone-in show in England on 5 Live. They always get, or not always, but they regularly get fans from West Brom saying that they want Tony Pulis to leave at the end of the season because their club's going backwards and that their football isn't good what they're watching in front of them. But I think it's horrible that people just want managed to be sacked. I know they get a lot of money and the payout's nice and... They're safe for the rest of their lives with how much money they get paid. I get all that, but just wanting someone to lose their job because they're, the team's doing as well as they possibly could just because you don't like the football they're playing. I would rather have a team that's doing as good as they can possibly do with the finances and the scenario. And yeah, they might not play amazing, but at least they're doing something and, play, and doing well as a team. If you just have a, a team that's average and they do average or they go below average and they don't live up to any expectations and they just constantly in relegation battles because you're trying to play nice football. You look at Swansea this season. I mean, obviously, Bob Bradley probably didn't bring in the nicest football, but I'm sure there were... You look at um, Paul Clement, the English French man, because they always call him Clement in, in Paris when he was manager for them. But when he ma when he was um, took over at Swansea, they thought they were going to have the glory days of like uh, Martinez and their tick attack of foot well mini version of tick attack of football that was a very nice style of play and it did win them games a lot. But you can't always accept that that's going to happen because the players that you can bring in for the budget they have aren't always going to produce. You look at Southampton; they've you know obviously got rid of quite a lot of amazing players that have gone to you know Liverpool and Man United and. Tottenham and even they've had to spend a bit more money bringing in players Origi oh what a save they even they've had to bring in players that cost a lot more money than they'd wish because you look at um Buffal he was a lot more money than some of the players they've brought in for you know a couple of million here and there he was I think 16 or 18 million which even for Premier League standard isn't that much but in terms of overall for them it's actually quite a high figure and even then he's not been a roaring success but as I've already said he's only had his first season in the league he's very young and it's you know he needs to be given a chance and I don't think people give these players enough chance when they do get into the league which is my overall point of the video today and my talking point so what, what I think people need to do is just chill out when their new player comes in don't expect the sun. Don't expect them to play exactly how they did when they were in the last league they were in. Now, if they were in the Premier League before, maybe you would expect them to do a bit better than a player that hasn't been in the league before. And I can understand that as a moaning point for some fans and some managers. But I think in the first season for a player that hasn't been in a league before, it's a completely different structure of play and a different... Um, tempo and it, they get different uh, different pressures and all that and you know adjusting to life in a, a new country um, you look at a lot of the Brazilian players they don't adjust at all to new countries I was um, one of the times where I was coaching in America there was a few Brazilian guys I was working with and um, they said like they learn English pretty quickly because they sort of had to working with English people you know we, we weren't gonna learn Portuguese and live with Americans who could hardly understand us anyway so we wouldn't try and learn Portuguese as well. And they always said that they were frustrated and annoyed that the Brazilians that did move for big money didn't try and at least learn the language of the country they're in because they said that they would fit in a lot better and be in these great teams for a lot longer if they learnt the language. Because I'm sure um, the ones that moved to like Spain, it's pretty easy for them because they're just learning you know, Spanish from Portuguese. It's not exactly a huge change. It's like American to American English, 
apparently. I've obviously never spoken the languages, so I don't know exactly what the ins and outs are. And let's play Sane and finesse it around the keeper. Yes, that's a finish from Sane, and the goalkeeper <laughs> has tried to eat him. And that's nice play. That's good play from Sane. Well, well done, good finish. 89th minute two. That's what you want. Oh, he's rode the tackle there. And that is full time. Yes, we are promoted to Division 6. A game late, but I did say that we'd probably lose the game two episodes ago, or last episode, I should say, because we played two games in this one. As you can see, we have won the title. That means we are in Division 6. As you can see, we won six games, lost one, but I knew we'd lose that one because the team they had, and they were just a better player than me. That's all I can say. So... What I'm going to do is end the episode here, so thank you for watching and peace.